Dude, I remember this is this is crazy, but I remember when my dad came out and I was like, oh, these are my tax returns for this year. And he goes, do you realize that you earned more this year than in my entire career combined? And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah. And I go, do you realize that this was like just talking about my dick and farts and stuff? <laughs> my daughters will never make more money than I made. <laughs> It's a great they're about to start their careers they'll never achieve what i have achieved they'll never fill these <sighs> shoes my daughter's old oh it's kind of nice it's kind of nice. Yeah. nice and by the way i want to just point this out yeah. to bring this full circle all of my life happened while i was drinking watching this slow and painful downfall of two bears one cave is like watching reruns of the dumb and dumber sequel we were all fans of the first one, but the sequel was just so bad that it ruined the original as well. Yet again, Tom and Bert have managed to scrape the barrel of the comedy podcasting art form by shitting first of all on their family, then their audience, followed by straight up gaslighting people with substance abuse issues. You see, unlike the rest of us, the endangered species of top 250 comedy assassins have this rare ability to live the lifestyles of homeless junkies, always knowing they'll never have to worry about the realities of life like the rest of us, thanks to their booming ticket sales and endless ad reads. However, it's hard to imagine there are many of us left watching Two Bears One Cave unironically. What are your shits like every day? Dude, I'm, I gotta be honest with you, I'm taking half shits in the morning. I take like a half a shit and then I hold it and then I take a full shit after that. You hold it? Like, I don't know. It's, it's, I'm not all coming out at the same time. It's really kind of frustrating. Like I'm taking uh -huh. half a shit and then a full Do they shit. come out as logs or are they just kind of yeah. like, they do? Oh yeah. The, the best feeling is when the log is going and you know, if you, if you just do it right, you won't break it. Uh, and you're like, okay, yeah. okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. And all these mixtures of different beverages don't affect the, this at all. No, no. Wow. I'm, 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 I think I'm, here's the other thing is I'm, I'm healthy. I'm the healthiest I've ever been. Like workout know. wise. I work out wise. Ever? Oh, hold on. Yes. You know, for a fact, I've been a lot unhealthier. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's not like a big stretch. I'm just in better shape than I've ever been. Working okay. out like crazy. Feel great. P, can I get a beer? Chosen one. You can have this one. And then, I okay. Just had a I trust you. Yeah. That second shit's coming up. Is it? Well, that was close. I got to pee. Oh, we had. Thank so, you. Um, Seriously, fuck Joe Rogan. And it's not just on their own podcast that they're becoming boring and insufferable. Tom Segura has a terrible track record as a guest on other podcasts, including his most recent appearance on Kill Tony, where he dulled the mood down to the point where he barely even bothered to hold the microphone in his hand. If you want to see my review in comparison of Tom Segura versus Sam Talent on Kill Tony, check out the link in the description to my Patreon, where you'll find a bunch of long-form uncensored videos covering Joe Rogan, Kill Tony and various lawsuits involving the usual suspects that you probably didn't even know about. But as for Tom and Bert, it was in last week's episode of Two Bears that they made perhaps one of the most delusional and ironic observations, possibly in the history of their podcast. This was like some inception level delusion where the delusion exists inside the delusion and you don't know which layer of delusion you're in because reality resembles the very delusion that you're deluded by. Ah, oh, fuck. Now I've confused myself. Just give me a minute here. Don't you wish you were like, oh, who was I just talking to about this? About, do you remember when we got into stand-up and there were the kids that were like, um, amazing. I can crush that room. And they all suck. And they all suck. They all suck. There are people who are so delusional about their sets and who they are that yeah. you're like, and you're like, what? Like, I go, I just wish I had an ounce of it. I wish I had an ounce of it just to get through the rough parts of, of life where you're like, where you wake up and you're like, I keep pushing off. I keep postponing going back on the road because I'm, I'm like, I'm not fixing anything. I'm not yeah. slowing down. I'm not doing anything to grow myself. I can't go back on the road yet. So I yeah. keep pushing it. I mean, I'm still That's doing good, it. Though. But I think with my with not getting on stage and not doing stand up, and I'm trying to distance and just write, but I'm not living. And then I go like, how are these people like so fucking wildly confident? Like it's almost like Christianity. Like they just like it's like a, a like a like an air of superiority. And I go, I wish I had just a little bit to wake up with. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Some people have an incredible belief 
in in their in or delusion in themselves. Tom and Bert sitting in one of their many podcast studios worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, wearing watches worth tens of thousands of dollars, earning millions of dollars a year in corporate sponsorships and ad deals, complaining that they wish they had a stronger sense of self and superiority has to be one of the biggest travesties of the 21st century. It's right up there with the deaths of Patrice O'Neill and Norm Macdonald on the list of shit that should never have happened. I honestly can't decide which one's sadder. Tell someone to go get us some beers. Okay. Yeah, tell Pete to go get us some beers. I would love a beer. Okay. I'm, a, I'm in a Florida fucking mood. Florida Florida man drinks. <laughs> Florida man drinks in the, in the afternoons. Or By the, the way, morning. I would argue, if you're thinking about quitting alcohol, don't, okay? If you're listening to this and you're thinking, today's the day, I'm going to quit. I'm done forever. It's fucking my life up. Don't. You're setting yourself up for failure. It's not the alcohol, it's you. Wait a minute. So can they get their life together? Yes. And still continue drinking? Look at me. I got my shit pretty together. <laughs> I'm a fucking mess, right? But right. I got a great woman in my, by my, my side, right? Yeah. Keeps me in track. Okay. And then, but the how thing- often does she, you know, adjust the levers um, with, with, let's just say, drinking specifically? <laughs> I don't know. I'm. I'm literally. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if she adjusts the levers. No. But she definitely walks up to the cockpit every now and then. And it's like, how fast are we going? <laughs> this is. Geez, it feels bumpy back there. Are you paying attention? Did that happened quite a bit. It happened yesterday <laughs> on my flight. Oh. Wait, I thought we weren't drinking on flights anymore. Oh, we're back. Bert, no one else is laughing except you, buddy. Nobody gets the joke. The fact that Bert's go-to topic is how drunk he is, yet also successful, tells you everything you need to know about him. He completely hijacked this episode by going into a rant about how people with alcohol problems are delusional in thinking that they need to quit, and instead they simply just need to get a grip on reality and focus their energy into improving their situation while still drinking. The level of cope that Bert goes through on a daily basis to justify his own drinking problem is wild. Like, the dude has resorted to convincing other alcoholics that quitting drinking isn't the solution to their addiction problems. And, and that's the thing is, you if you say, I'm it, that's it, I'm done, I'm never going to drink again. Right. Then a glass of wine, your your life's fucked. Your life isn't fucked. Your life's no. But there's people that are sober oh, no. that are like, no, it's been great. It's They're, been a great they are, pivot. They are holding on by a thread. All, but, of, them. All of them are holding on by a thread. Sometimes they're thriving because they quit. Some people, some people. But then yeah. all of a sudden you make a fucking I would love bay. to see you like this. What? Just totally sober. I, I do it all the time. No, I, I mean like. Like sober for the rest of my life? I, I would just be fun to watch. You'd be like a Superman version of yourself. I'll tell you what's better than being, I, and I've been sober for big stretches. I'll tell what's you what's a big even, stretch. Like four months. Four months? Yeah. Really? Yeah, three months. <laughs> <laughs> three months is the longest I've ever gone. I mean, I did like 17 years when I was a child, but. Yeah, we're not yeah, going to count yeah. those. But uh, yeah, four months is the biggest stretch. Bro, not drinking until you're an adult doesn't count as being sober. Seriously, this guy is out of control. He has absolutely zero grasp of reality. Most of the people who watch his podcast would lose everything in their lives if they lived like him for just six months. That's the bit he doesn't understand. He's basically promoting a balanced lifestyle where you keep drinking, but also focus on the other parts of your life. The thing is, he's able to drink all day because he doesn't have a real job. He just sits on a podcast a few times a week, then goes on tour where he drinks himself stupid and tells the machine story. Most people literally couldn't afford to drink that much, let alone function in a real job day after day, while also managing responsibilities of running a household and being a family man. He's able to pull it off because he's bringing in millions of dollars every month and keeping the machine lubricated. If you take away all the money, Bert's basically just a bum. But what he said next truly challenged the fabric of logic that holds the universe together. I honestly wonder if he realizes that every word that came out of his mouth in this next clip was absolute dog shit. Even his handler, Tom, was like, dude, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say, it's, but it's like, I, I think, you ready for this? Yeah. I'm ready. I think a lot of dudes, I'm saying dudes, so I'm not going to talk about women. I'm a man. I only talk about men. A lot of dudes 
get sober for the attention. And you got to realize, are you getting sober for the attention? Are you getting sober because you're sitting there going like, I want to tell people, I want to have a reason for people to root for me again. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah. hey, you just, you know, I quit drinking. And you're like, oh, good for you. Yeah. And then that's your thing. That's your new thing. But that, by identity, the way, that's the same yeah. thing booze was for you. Right. Booze was that same fucking thing. So in other words, instead of like trying to get the attention that way, mm-hmm. stick to who you were. Stick to who you are. Get don't drink. change. Don't dr- or don't quit drinking. Yeah. But just get it under control. Get it under control. Do this. Go to the bar tonight, have a drink, and then don't drink for one hour. What about the person who's like, yeah, I can't do that? I don't know. Well, that shouldn't they quit then? Get a job on a boat. What happened? I don't know. I don't know if you tell that guy. I don't know. Oh. But I think that's who we're talking to is like the person who's like, what do I do if I can't wait an hour? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, quit? I don't know. Maybe you have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you might have a problem. You might need to All quit. Right. We're going to wrap up on that. that <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I... Oh, Jesus. What are we doing here, B? How can one individual be so far gone off the deep end and yet not require a disabled permit? Bert should come out with one of those labels they put on the zinc containers, but instead of saying caution, nicotine is addictive, it should just say caution, host is a fucking idiot. But there's only one topic that Tom and Bert love discussing more than Bert's drinking habits. Yep, you guessed it, money. We're going for the two bears, one cave, holy trinity today. I'm you cool. really don't have a concept of money. I do not. Still. Yeah, to this day. You you really don't like know no. what's there and what you can. I don't even know what bank we have. You, don't, don't, you don't know what bank you're at? I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even, I couldn't even tell you. Do you know what investment firm, like who you have like investments with? No. I think Steve. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't care. I got it. But I don't care and like I've never cared. Like that's the thing. It's like don't think just because I'm I have money now that I, I'm gonna start caring. I didn't care when we were broke. Yeah. I didn't care when I never have cared. I will say that uh, having known you when you had no money, yeah, you don't seem really that different to me. Uh uh-uh. uh. I'm I I I I I still get nervous buying things. Mm-hmm. Like I still I'm still a child. Like if I if I'm gonna buy something, like my tour bus. I was like, why are we doing this? This is so much money. Don't, let's not do this. We don't, we can't afford it. Yeah. And then Leanne's like, you have no idea how much money we have. We can afford it. And I was like, I know, but it feels like wasteful. Like we'll just keep renting. And Leanne's the one that goes, no, the amount of the, cause when I would rent buses for a year, for a year, yeah. For this whole year. And that is a lot of f-ing money. It is. And so she was like, trust me, this is a wise investment. So I don't even know. Like I would do it, except <clears throat> that I, I realized after the last tour, that I hate the bus. <laughs> I just hate it. So I was like, w- why would I do that? Like, you know what I mean? Like if I don't oh. enjoy it. So oh, wow. That's so wild. Tom, I go to my bus yeah. to hang out. Yeah. Like I don't hang out in my house. Like if like Leanne went for uh, dinner with her friends and I and I was at the office and I just went to my tour bus. I hate spending time on the on any bus. Drive. I hate the drive. I hate it. You're asleep during the drive. I love driving during the day. I love. I love taking two days off and just staying on the bus. I want to fly everywhere. Oh my god. Yeah. I have no interest in planes. I always. I, have, I, hate I wish I could. I wish I could fly from the hotel to this place. Like that's how much I like flying. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could have landed on the so roof. I wish I could have landed on the roof here. <laughs> Imagine Bert's family just chilling inside their house while Bert's outside in his tour bus drinking on his own. I think we're seriously at the point where we need a Bert Kreischer reality show. It would be like keeping up with the Kardashians meets an idiot abroad. I mean, come on, as if he'd say no to that. And as for Tom, he's basically a billionaire living in a millionaire's body. He would love nothing more than to travel exclusively by helicopter and private jet, not having to worry about coming into contact with the paws. If you haven't been following this channel, I recently covered his new diet obsession, which involves employing a private chef to prepare all his meals for him so he can focus on his various business interests and ensure he earns a reasonable return on equity from all of his investments. How is it possible for somebody with their head so far up their own ass to possibly still be funny and write good material when they basically have no interaction with the real world? Well, apparently it's just blind luck. We are from a very lucky generation. Yeah. We, me and you are from a generation where not everyone could do everything. 
I know I sound fucking out of my mind sometimes, but I chose comedy when it wasn't an occupation. Yeah. Like when no one was doing comedy, no one decided to be a comedian when we started doing comedy. Well, I think people were, but they, we had, first of all, we had no idea that the internet would be yeah. the, the platform that it, like the internet existed, but just barely, but yeah. it, it did exist. But no one was like, yeah, you can share your stuff there. Like we went into it being like, God, I hope enough, the right people see me and I can get maybe some TV deal, but more importantly, have clubs just book me that was it that's i didn't even goal. know there were clubs i didn't even know how comedy worked yeah i just knew i wanted to do stand-up and i needed to move to new york and i was like i'd never seen i'd seen in comics i didn't even understand how the business worked bert thinking he was part of the first generation to make money from stand-up is absolutely fucking crazy just to put this into perspective when bert started doing stand-up comedy seinfeld was in its final season but not only that, there was the Ed Sullivan show in the 50s and 60s, Johnny Carson from the 60s into the 90s, same with Merv Griffin, also Letterman in the 80s and 90s, Jay Leno as well, and the Arsenio Hall show. The Improv Comedy Club had been operating since the 60s in New York and then LA, and then the Comedy Store in LA into the 70s. What in the actual fuck is Bert talking about? Bro thinks he discovered stand-up comedy. That's the thing that is shared no, no matter the generation is you start it and you do it because you're like, oh, this way I don't have to get a real job. Yeah. It's like this is the best. If, if I can make enough to, to survive, then I can not have a real job, which is really the goal. Joe Rogan. I mean, I, don't, I, I think people forget. I think because now Joe is what he is. Joe Rogan didn't, didn't get in this to have a podcast. No. At all. He got in it, one, to get away from head head wounds. Yeah. And head the, trauma. Head trauma. Yeah. And and he loved comedy. And yeah. I and I, I, feel, I see so many people nowadays, and I'm, I'm, I'm not shitting on them. I don't really care. It's like, I just have fun with your life, ultimately. But, like, it's, it's so funny that the thing that we picked when we had no real, like, about a lot of options yeah. now seems like a very viable job for people. Yeah. I mean, I think Do you remember go, telling your dad you wanted to do comedy? Yes. How did yeah. that go? You know, he was surprisingly, like, I don't think he fully got it, but he's really supportive. But he still was like, very. he was still like, yeah, you know, I go like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm still doing better than last year. That's what I always graded on for him. I was like, well, last year I was like this, this year's a better year. Oh, I was the exact opposite. I had an amazing first year of comedy. Oh, right. Yeah. I had you amazing, had like deals. I had an like, amazing second year of comedy. I had an amazing first three, four years of comedy was like chosen child. The yeah. chosen one. I had a big deal six months into doing comedy with Will Smith. I had another big deal. I had a TV show. I did a pilot. I had another TV show. <laughs> and then I spent it all. Isn't that crazy? I spent it all. Bird is the living embodiment of failing upwards at every step of the way where others would have been forced to throw in the towel and try their hand at something new. Bert kept getting lifted up by an invisible hand. This whole episode of Two Bears, One Cave consisted of Bert bragging about how he's drunk but still successful, how he's richer than his kids will ever be, and how they have no hope of filling his shoes, how he was part of the first generation to figure out how to monetize stand-up comedy. Oh, and don't forget, he explained how alcoholics try to go sober for attention. This coming from the guy who did a six-month tour last year telling every man and his dog that he went sober so that he could keep on drinking. Nobody does attention quite like our boy Bert Kreischer. As for Tom, I don't think I've ever seen somebody age so disgracefully as he has in the last five years. The guy's only 45 years old, and it's not just physical. In the space of two comedy tours, 30 pounds in weight loss, and a gym membership, he's gone from up-and-coming comedy legend to comedy Karen, and we have all the receipts to account for it. But if you want to see my full breakdown of his latest Kill Tony appearance and how he completely killed the mood compared to Sam Talent, who's quickly becoming one of the best regular guests on the show, check out the link in the description to my patreon where you'll find a bunch of exclusive videos as well also if you're not a regular here on youtube yet hit that subscribe button and make sure to give me a thumbs up if you ended up enjoying this video thanks for watching i'll catch you in the next one i told christina last night because like whenever i'm self-loathing um uh, which i was yesterday i i want a i want a certain type of empathy and she never does it instinctively 
So as she was talking to me about my self-loathing, I go, can I tell you something? This is what I want you to do when I do this. Whatever your instinct is, ignore it. Ignore all your initial instincts. <laughs> and she was like, that's really nice. I go, yeah. Whatever you think, do the opposite. <laughs> and she was like, great. And then she goes, I just, how about I don't talk? And I go, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.